Hey everybody, today we're going to talk a little bit more about perspective. This is Perspective on Any Planet, Part 2. First, I'd like to clarify a few things about perspective. Uh, I got this passage from a blog. Uh, the blogger is someone named Ashley Webster, and she writes, Our eyes see in a single point perspective into a vanishing point of convergence where the ground meets the sky at the horizon. Whenever you have parallel lines on a flat plane, like railroad tracks that are equally parallel to each other, they will always converge into a single vanishing point, and the lines all come together from both sides and top and bottom or ground and sky, like shown in the picture. So according to what Ashley is saying here, the ground slopes up and the sky slopes down, and where they intersect, that is the horizon, and that is where the vanishing point is. So I'd just like to examine a few pictures and see if that's actually the case. So this is what every artist wishes the world was like, at least lazy artists like me. Uh, here we have a nice landscape. Everything's parallel to everything else. Everything's nice, lined up properly, real neat and tidy. All the perspective lines run together and intersect right at the vanishing point, which is right on the horizon. This is right out of your basic textbook on how to draw in one point perspective. And as you see, the things that are farther away, like the house on the right, are smaller than things closer. Why is that? Why do things far away seem smaller? Well, this should look familiar to you. This is a picture of a human eye. It has a lens on the front and a retina in the back. And what happens is light from an object passes through the lens and projects an image on the retina. If the object is further away, the projected image is smaller. See that? Further away, the image on the retina becomes smaller. And further away, even more smaller. If the object is very far away or very small, the projected image will be difficult or impossible to see. The retina is not sensitive enough to detect an image that is too small. A larger object will still project a larger image and still be visible further away than a smaller one. So here we've got our little guy standing in front of a tall structure of some kind. And even though he is closer, he projects a smaller image than the larger object behind him. Here we have both of these objects. We have a person and a uh, building, some structure of some sort, and they are the same distance away from us. That's what this red line indicates. So if we move them further away, each of the objects appears to get smaller. And if you move them really far away, they get very small. Now notice that the person is getting pretty small and hard to see, but the large building or structure is still easily visible. And as they move further away still, uh, the person is really tiny, but the building is more than easily visible. And if we go back even further, we can still see the building. Might have to squint a little bit, put on our glasses. The person, even if we remove all of our guidelines, uh, I did actually include the image of the person in this image. He's about the size of a pixel or two. If I put a little glow around him, you can see where he is, uh, but he's too small to see. So even though he hasn't reached the vanishing point, we cannot see him. And the building is still visible because it's larger. So let's talk a little bit about perspective lines and vanishing points and how they work. Now the lines on this square are parallel. If the square is tilted away from us, those lines no longer appear parallel and, if extended, would intersect at the vanishing point. In real life, things are not usually as simple as that picture or that shape. Most objects we see are not centered directly in front of us, sitting on a perfectly flat surface. Real life is kind of messy. The vanishing point isn't always going to be in a real convenient place for us if we want to draw a realistic picture. Here's a very common misconception. If things are far enough away, they will eventually reach the vanishing point and disappear or vanish from view. The reality is that no matter how far we extend this shape, it will never truly reach the vanishing point unless it were literally infinitely long. 
As they get farther away, things do appear to get smaller and smaller and closer together, but they never really intersect at the vanishing point. For more on this, see my previous video on perspective. So let's look at some actual real-world examples. This image I got from Wikipedia in the actual article on vanishing points, and the caption for it says, Railroad tracks vanishing into the distance. Now if we enlarge the picture and look closely, those tracks do not actually intersect at all. If you extended the perspective lines, they would intersect at the vanishing point here, but that's not actually what happens. It looks like they go over a hill or something. They don't intersect at the vanishing point. Here's one. found this in a Google search, and this one really looks like, boy, this, this is really flat. Maybe these do actually intersect at the vanishing point. But again, if we zoom in, now it's blurry and pixelated because I had to enlarge the picture. But if they did intersect, that would be the horizon where the vanishing point would be. However, if we make perspective lines following the lines of the picture, the actual vanishing point is above that horizon. Uh, so what's probably happening again is it's going up and then down a hill or something like that. They are not intersecting at the vanishing point as you can clearly see. Here's an interesting picture. This one I actually saw in a video uh, presented by a flat earth advocate talking about how roads and railroad tracks and so forth disappear at the vanishing point on the horizon. Well, if we zoom in here, again, we notice the road does not disappear at the vanishing point. In fact, you can clearly see they're not even touching the two sides of the road. So this is going up a hill and then over it. Secondly, if you extend these lines here and make perspective lines out of them, uh, they intersect there, nowhere near the horizon. And these telephone poles here, they intersect nowhere near the horizon, if you extend their perspective lines. So here we've got three apparent vanishing points. Oh, and by the way, uh, if the horizon is the point where the ground beats the sky and you can't see further than that, as my friend Ashley claimed uh, at the beginning of this video, am I the only person who can see those mountains there? It seems kind of strange that if there's a horizon that you can't see beyond, there's a whole mountain range behind that that you can see. But anyway, Fact. In most images, there are more than one vanishing point. Let's take an example that I happen to be familiar with. This is my street. This is where I live. I took this picture. According to an app that I often use, it's a stargazing sky map for finding constellations and so forth. It tells me that the true horizon is here. And I tend to trust that app because if I turn around, it tells me the true horizon is here, and that is Lake Michigan. There's nothing separating the Earth from the sky, so that is what would be considered the true horizon. This is Lakeshore Boulevard there, so if I'm standing on Lakeshore Boulevard and looking up my street, I made the picture black and white, you'll see why in a moment. This is 8th Street. So this section of the street is pretty flat. So from Lakeshore Boulevard to 8th Street, that's a pretty flat stretch of land. Then it goes up a steep hill to 9th Street. And then from 9th Street, there's an even steeper climb to the top of the hill. 10th Street runs along the top of that hill. And it's a really steep hill. Nobody likes it in winter when it gets icy. But anyway, if we take away all of that stuff and just show the shape of this road, we can examine it really closely. And this segment of the road, if we extend the perspective lines, these parallel lines, they meet at a vanishing point there. In this segment, the vanishing point is there. And for this segment, the perspective lines intersect at a vanishing point way up there. In this picture, we have three planar segments, each with its own perspective lines and each with its own vanishing point. And there it is laid over the actual picture of my street. And once again, there's the true horizon. And none of those vanishing points actually lie on the true horizon. So what can we do with this information? Well, it's good to know as an artist because it will help you draw things properly even when the landscape is a little more complicated than a perfectly flat plane. So let's say I'm going to put telephone poles and if you watched my last video, you guys know I love telephone poles. So I'm going to put some on this top segment of the street and some more on the next block and some on the next block. And here we go. This is correctly drawn perspective-wise. And if we maybe 
connect them with a line. Uh, maybe it's a fence. Maybe someone put a fence there. We use the same method, put another fence on the other side, but I wouldn't want to live in that neighborhood. Um, I'm a little too claustrophobic. So let's make them telephone poles. Ah, isn't that nice? Nice green grass, blue sky. And you know what? Just because I really want to go the extra mile for you guys, I'll even put the telephone poles that run along the top of the hill on 10th Street and put that all together. Isn't that nice? Oh, what a beautiful picture. The top of the hill where the sky appears to meet the earth is sometimes called the apparent horizon. And if we use that horizon to put our vanishing point on and then put telephone poles based on that, uh, that doesn't work out too well. As you can see, you've got some telephone poles in the street and you've got some in the middle of someone's yard. Uh, that's not a neighborhood I would want to live in, so don't draw it that way. Now, let's try some other stuff. Let's put a house here. So we have to use these perspective lines and that vanishing point if we're going to put it on this segment of the street. I won't go into how to draw a house correctly. There's a million videos on that, how to do that in one point perspective. But we put it in the rest of the picture and there it is. That's actually right about where my house is. It's not orange, but that's about where I live. If we use the true horizon and use the perspective lines from that, the house would look like this. And as you can see, that's not correct. Right there, there's an obvious flaw in the drawing right there. So that's not how you do it. Now let's put a house here. So we have to use these perspective lines and this vanishing point. And there it is, there's a house there. This one's gonna be purple. And there you go. So it's parallel to that segment of the street. If we compare it to the house on the other block, you can see that the perspective lines don't line up, but it is correct in terms of perspective. Except for one thing. Let's take a close look at this house. Notice that these lines are parallel. That's not completely realistic. Uh, if you go outside and look at your house, you'll probably notice that the corner of your house that's further away from you is smaller than the one that's closer to you. So you've got to have more perspective lines to draw this properly. So these lines uh, intersect at a vanishing point somewhere off the screen. And these have a vanishing point here. I'll move the house over so we can see both vanishing points. And now we have what is called two-point perspective, and if you want to draw a three-dimensional structure a little more accurately, two-point perspective usually works better than one-point perspective. There is not always one single vanishing point that all parallel lines intersect with. Sometimes there's two. And if we compare the two, here's a house drawn in one-point perspective, here's one drawn in two-point perspective, uh, I think you'll agree the one on the right is a little more realistic than the one on the left. So let's look again at what we were told at the beginning. Our eyes see in a single point perspective into a vanishing point of convergence where the ground meets the sky at the horizon. Not all of that is true in most cases. We don't always converge into a single vanishing point where all the lines come together. Now let's look at one more way that the vanishing point can be used. Let's put one way up high. And this time we're going to be looking up at the vanishing point, not straight ahead. Why would you do that? Well. Maybe we're drawing a skyscraper, and here we are looking at a tall building skyscraper, and we're looking at it from close up, and we're looking straight up to the top. That is what the perspective is going to be. Perspective does not always have to be on a flat surface. Sometimes it has nothing to do with the actual horizon. Now you'll notice there are a few more lines in this picture, so we actually need two more vanishing points. And now we have what's called three-point perspective. And why is this useful? Well, suppose we want to put a little more detail in this building. Maybe there's windows or something like that, um, some lines there. This is the correct proportion for how that would look like. And there we go. Put in a nice background. Yeah, it looks nice. It's probably, I don't know, maybe this is the Willis Tower in Chicago. Chicago's the windy city, so we'll look at that. Make the wind blow. Boy, that's, that is some sweet animation right there. I expect a phone call from Pixar any day now. That was amazing. Now let's do this. Let's take away the bottom of this building, and now we just have this cube floating in the sky. Maybe this is a ship from the Vogon destructor fleet to come to destroy the Earth or something like that. You would want to use three-point perspective if you were looking at it rising or floating in the sky. 
and just for fun let's put a ground underneath it and move it like that oh look at that that is something you know I, I, I really just did that because I wanted to show that uh, I could move the shadow along with the Sun just to look cool watch the shadow and the Sun here we go All right. are you watching that Pixar did you, did you see that because I could I could use the work but this is no longer accurate perspective this is no longer a cube because if there were a cube and we were looking at it from this angle the third vanishing point would be much higher than that and the lines would be more nearly parallel so this isn't really an accurate portrayal of a cube this is more correct so that's about all i have to say for today thanks for watching see you next time right. maybe, maybe not pixar maybe i don't know works illumination studios i don't know somebody i could be a you know in between or maybe okay bye